Actually, this is for a time capsule, right? Our program. <laughs> oh, of course. Yes. yes. Yeah. There's some marvelous lines that really. No, well, and uh, yeah. stra straight into the tomb. All right. Sink into the earth. <laughs> Tale of Dan the Lion, or Dan de Leon. Dan the Lion was a broadleaf weed grown in the earth and sprung from a seed. The de Leon neighbors were burdocks and grasses of the lower and lower middle classes. Dan grew up with his brother Bert converting sunlight, rain, and dirt to deep tap roots and leaves that spread beyond the borders of a bed of hybrid teas, the prideful boast of Miss Belinda Butter Toast. There wasn't a lady in all of Kent who grew what she grew or spent what she spent. The size of the Butter Toast roses was such, each bloom required a kind of crutch, and to that crutch was fixed a sign with the rose's name, such as Prosser Pine, or Captain Jack, or Hodgson's Flory, or, fattest of all, Belinda's Glory. Now Dan, since he had been a bug, believed all being sown in mud, whether from cutting sprung or seeds, whether roses or common weeds, enjoy a simple natural right to the rain that falls and to air and light. Such is the faith of all that grows wildly and not in vials of rose. Sadly for Dan, Miss Buttertoast conceived of weeds as an enemy host and instructed her gardener, Thaddeus Thwaite, to root up, poison, extirpate all plants but those that she had planted to only her roses was growth to be granted. I want those dandelions sprayed, Thwaite's mistress had ordered, and he'd obey. And so one day, as his leaves were warming and worms were to wiggle and bees were swarming, Dan felt an awful itching spread up through his stem and round his head. The cause of this sudden irritancy? A herbicide called 2,4-D, which tricks its victims to grow too quickly, swelling up and turning sickly, all in one hectic afternoon like a living gas balloon. Like prisoners too long in prison, Dan's leaves began to twist and wizen. His stem shot up and then drooped down, his yellow petals crisp to brown. With one last desperate act of will and all that was left of his chlorophyll, Dan heaved up his head and managed to blurt, Good cousin Bill, dear brother Bert, Hide if you can, boys. Thwaites got me square in my stamens with two four D. Then faintly across the smooth mown lawn, like evening breeze or breath in drawn, Dan heard this wondrous strange response in the voice of his long dead grandpa Ponce. When the stems are plucked and foliage shorn, that's the best time to be reborn. Drive down your root an extra inch beyond the pebble's tightest pinch. It's shrink or slim when times are dry, but never say, never say, never say die. These were the words that Dan repeated as his petals fell and his root retreated deep in the mazes of the earth where death gets all confused with birth, where seedlings quicken as fruits decay, and beetles burrow and weasels play. There Dan sat brooding and biding his time, nibbling acids and munching on lime. Meanwhile, Miss Buttertoast has planned something really rather grand, a rout, a pageant, and a fete for Belinda's glory and crimson jet. For Meg and Amy, Joe and Beth, for careless love and sudden death, for Mammon's bride and Grandma Moses, in short, a party just for roses.